Hi, everyone. I am back with an astro weather check for Sunday's Capricorn full moon. This is a huge, huge full moon. I'm going to dare to say I haven't looked at all the charts for the rest of the year, but just because of what I'm seeing with this and what I'm feeling already, I think this is probably going to be the, the most powerful full moon of the entire year. Bold statement, I know, but when we get into it, you will see <laughs> what I'm talking about. And just the fact that it's <clears throat> our second Capricorn full moon. So two full moons in the same sign. Tagline. Uh, the first one I gave the tagline dream form part one. So this one will be dream form part two. And we'll get into it. So I just want to make a few announcements before we get into the Astro Weather Check. And then we'll dive in. We'll look at the chart for the full moon. I'll talk about the entire list of aspects that I have here to go over. So bear with me. I will sum it up and everything. And then I'll share your horoscopes also. So everyone will have a better idea of what I'm saying kind of put into the, the writing that I did for this one that was just released yesterday in Shore Local. So yeah, we have a whopper of a full moon incoming. And I'm guessing if you're sensitive, <laughs> like I am, and a lot of people that I know, you are probably already feeling it. So we have that. And then I want to pull us some Oracle cards from the two decks that I've been working with for the past two weeks. And then we'll wrap it up for today. So I want to keep it as simple as possible, but also go as deeply as possible. Because like I said, this is a huge, huge full moon. So just a few announcements and things I want to cover before we get into it. One is I did definitely skip the Astro Weather Check for the Cancer New Moon that was on July 5th. I I just felt like the wind was taken out of my sails a little bit. I can't, I can't even explain it any other way. Uh, it was just I had no energy. I had no energy whatsoever. So if you can relate to that, if you were feeling that way around the end of June, the first week of July, we had some uh, one by one retrogrades happening with Saturn and Neptune. They kind of stationed around the same time. I don't know if it was that or just my whole experience between these two full moons has been an interesting one. Cancer season has definitely been an emotional one with some family stuff happening. So it's just been you know, the usual challenges with feeling our emotions and all that. So apologies for skipping the full Astro Weather Check, but we did share a uh, Oracle card reading from the deck that I'm going to, one of the decks I'm going to pull from today for us. So if you miss me, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I am back and will be as consistent as I can moving forward. Skipped one, so that's not too bad. So just to, you know, work that into this, our Cancer New Moon was on July 5th, and we are now back in um, order with our lunar cycles. Our lunar cycles are back on track with this incoming full moon. So we will have our new moons and then our full moons from, you know, the sign of the new moon, and then the full moon and the opposite sign the way that they're supposed to be. They've been backwards since April of last year when we had the two new moons in uh, Aries. So just to <clears throat> sprinkle that into the conversation as well. So... That I'm back. And also I had a little bit of a hiatus with my in-person greetings at the Sage Lady in May's Landing at Zen Landing Wellness Studio. I am back there as of yesterday. So you can book in person with me again, the first and third Thursdays of every month. So I will include a link for that in the episode notes because I think that I might be moving to just... Um, bookings in advance and not walk-ins. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I've been doing this now for about a year and it's nice to get a change of scenery. As you, you all know, if you've been with me for a while, I do work from home, but I'm not quite sure if I want to have walk-ins available at this point. So um, that will be continuing on first and third Thursdays of every month from nine or nine 30 to about one in May's landing. And those are half hour readings and those are called navigating your natal chart. So if you've never had an astrology reading before, we can just dive into your birth chart for a half hour and see where you're at as far as planetary cycles and <clears throat> energies and all that. And just, uh, you know, get your feet wet a little bit with your own birth chart. If we, you've already had a birth chart reading or if we've already worked together, we can cover whatever you want in that half hour. So those are available. The bookings are up and 
I'm pretty sure the first Thursday of August is the first. So I'll be back there on the first, I believe. So I'll put that link in the episode notes for everybody. And then just a reminder, these are now video episodes. So on Spotify, they support video podcasts. So you can watch the video there. You can watch the video episode on our Sea Goddess Healing Arts YouTube channel. Those are the two platforms that'll be posted on that have video support. And then audio on Apple Podcasts. And there's a few other platforms that it's on Audible, Amazon Music, that kind of thing. So I do <clears throat> share the charts now for whatever we're talking about, full moons, new moons, all that, as well as the Oracle cards. You'll get to see them if you're watching the video version. And then just ways to support the show. I believe Spotify now has the ability for at least stars. So follows and stars on Spotify. If I have any polls or questions engaging with those, it's always nice to see when somebody responds. Uh, stars and reviews on Apple Podcasts. That just helps me, helps the podcast get seen. As you know, these Astro Weather Checks are bonus episodes of my Becoming Chiron, the key to unlocking healing and personal alchemy podcast. So that helps me just get found, get seen, and feedback. I'm always looking for and appreciating feedback. And then on our YouTube, you can comment, give us a, a subscribe, a like, a follow there, <clears throat> and then subscribe all so you get all notifications whenever we post any videos on our YouTube channel. So, and then I have a um, donation subscription option as well for $8.99 a month. So if you're wanting to support me financially and in a position to do that, I would greatly appreciate that as that helps me continue on with my creative projects that I'm not quite there yet with the followers and the subscriptions to have sponsors or ads or anything. So right now this is still just a creative project and my, my baby to an extent but also a uh, donation of my time. So financial support is always appreciated. So there's that. And then just, you know, bare minimum, easiest way, like I said, comments, follows, shares, likes to help me get the numbers that I need to start having sponsors and running ads. So yeah, the ways to support us and me, Sea Goddess and me. And then, um, yeah, so I'm back in person readings and we have, a, we're planning another retreat. And we are going to release that tomorrow. So it will be open for registration tomorrow. It's called Practical Magic. And it will be somewhere in the Southern New Jersey shore from November 1st to November 3rd. So we're definitely going to infuse the Halloween and Scorpio energy into everything. And this one's going to be really fun. We're just going to teach you how to infuse practical magic into your daily life with lots of workshops and classes. We're partnering with um, a dear friend of ours this time around. So we'll actually have yoga and, and things like that. And we'll be making all the meals ourselves and infusing all of our beautiful kitchen witch energy into everything that we do that weekend. So we're super excited about it. It's only available to 15 people. So stay tuned on all of our socials and our emails and our website for that to be open and available for registration tomorrow. Super, super, super excited about that one. And I'll be teaching aromatherapy and housekeeping with aromatherapy and kitchen magic. So super, super, super excited there. And we have a couple other things coming up in August on the 9th. That's a Friday. We'll be in Hamilton at DiMatteo Vineyards doing a sip and shop with Sea Goddess Healing Arts. So we'll have all of our aromatherapy products there that I make and Jesse's Organite pieces. Mandy will be doing readings. We'll have all of our jewelry that Sue makes for us and the, um, beautiful dot work that our Seattle's Jamie makes and we're just really excited for that that's going to be a really fun night it'll be our first event there so we're super excited to just meet some new people get to see some new faces and, and work in a different town so that is on Friday August 9th from I believe it's four to eight that's also on our website on our homepage, and also on our events page and outside of that I think that's it for announcements. We're, we're back live on our on Tuesdays, still 11.30 a.m. Eastern <clears throat> on our Facebook page now, not our YouTube. So Tuesday live, free readings at 11.30. Mandy and I will be doing it uh, next week. Jess will be away. So if you want to join us and just get to know us a little better, sample our services, get a reading, 
you don't have to be there for the live. You can email us a question or, or ask for a reading and we'll do it for you. And then you can catch the replay and get your reading. So you just email us for that. So you got us healingarts at gmail.com. And then to get in touch directly with me for feedback or anything, ursa alchemy at gmail.com. So that's U-R-S-A-A-L-C-H-E-M-Y at gmail.com. So yeah, join us. It's free. It's fun. Well, we were usually on for about an hour and, um, you know, we just talk about the current energies and personal shares or whatever we, we all have going on with the current energies. I'm sure we'll be talking about whatever goes on with the full moon incoming on Sunday. So stay tuned and stay in touch for that. And yeah, let's get into this. So <clears throat> I hit record right around noon. It's probably like 1150 here on the East Coast in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So Eastern time. And we have the full moon incoming at 6.17 a.m. on Sunday. So hopefully it's clear when it rises tomorrow night. That will be the fullest that we'll see it unless you're up before sunrise on Sunday and can see it setting because then that'll be right around when it's full. This is, like I said, the second Capricorn full moon in a, in a row. We haven't had two consecutive full moons in the same zodiac sign, I believe, since July, August of 21. That's the last one that I can remember. So this is relatively rare. <laughs> it's not a blue moon. It's called a seasonal moon because it's a it's in the same zodiac sign, not in the same calendar month. Our last Capricorn full moon was on June 21st, right after the solstice. And I covered that in the last Astro Weather Check. So it might be a good idea to revisit that Astro Weather Check because the way to best work with this is to pay very close attention to what came up during the first Capricorn full moon and the chapter of your life that's been written between the two. That was the, my experience with the last time I shared this story on the podcast and then also in my lunar alchemy class when we had the two full moons in Aquarius back in the summer of 21 that was the story that was written between those two this is like three years ago at this point it's a really important time of the year for me for reflection um, I exited the corporate world and that was two full moons in my 10th house so knowing where this these two full moons are happening in your chart is really important if you know your chart if not, I would love to work with you. <laughs> um, so that is, the, in my personal experience and just, you know, professionally, that's the best way. Like, I'm all about the lived experience of astrology, as you all know. So that's the best way to work with this. Spend some time over the next day or two before the full moon happens, paying very close attention to the details, journaling, what has been happening the last several weeks what was happening around the new moon on the 5th of july what 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 is being written in your life like what's the story what's the story and what's the dream form that's the most important thing as uh i covered in the last astro weather check and i'll put a link to that one in this um ep the episode notes for this one as well it was it's ruled like capricorn is ruled by saturn Saturn's in the sign of Pisces, getting very, very close to Neptune at this point. Neptune's in the sign of Pisces. So that directly relates to our dreams. That directly relates to putting some kind of physical form to our imagination, to our dreams. One of the interesting things I think I'll either write about or do a class about eventually is the reemergence of the imaginary friend. Uh, I saw that movie that came out recently, If... And then it made me revisit the movie Drop Dead Fred, because that was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. And I think there's some interesting kind of threads going on there with what's surfacing and, you know, the collective and creativity, like Pisces relates to creativity, to cinema and works of art, painting, any kind of artwork, really. But dream form is the way that I'm describing this is the way that I'm finding it best, because I feel like all of that kind of falls into the dream and imaginal realm anyway. So now Saturn is retrograde. Saturn was direct during the last Capricorn full moon. Neptune is also now retrograde. So there's a review process underway, but there's definitely 
a bigger culmination of whatever culminated at the end of June. So I think that it would be wise to review your last month. Think back to January when the moon was new in Capricorn. I gave that one the tagline, your untapped inner magic. So just to kind of revisit some of the themes, Capricorn is traditionally associated with tradition, uh, structures, government, rules over our bones and our, you know, the, the things that allow us to have this human form that support us. But in my opinion, if you've been with me for a little while, you know this, that Capricorn is very much also related to our inner mystic. And... I always go back to the imaginary creature that is the representation of Capricorn, the sea goat or the goatfish doesn't even exist in nature. So it is a, a imaginal creature that is able to navigate the, the form, the structure, climb the mountain, but also swim in the depths. The one thing to really keep in mind with this full moon also is Pluto and the Pluto influence is huge. Pluto is still in Aquarius. Pluto shifted into Aquarius in January. This is the longest stint that we've had so far in our lifetimes of Pluto in Aquarius. It's at zero degrees right now, and we'll touch on that when we look at the chart. But the degree that this full moon is occurring at will be 29 degrees of Capricorn. So, and the sun at 29 degrees of Cancer. And we'll see that in the chart in a moment. So, that 29th degree of any sign is called the anoretic degree and it's full or like pregnant of all of the energy of the entire sign. So not only will the moon be full, but in many ways, the energy will also be full. So yes, think about all the things happening, especially with what happened last weekend and everything with government and structures and systems that is sort of Coming to the surface, showing its dark underbelly, people and things, people and structures, people in those structures, people in positions of power, and how that is still having some kind of breakdown, because that's how Pluto works. It breaks down and purifies, and Pluto will be moving back into Capricorn one more time this year, September to November, so it'll be sitting at that 29 degrees at that anorak degree where this full moon is happening. So there's really interesting things brewing on the collective in the collective consciousness, but also that continued breakdown, like the last chapter of the breakdown of these systems that quote unquote govern us. Look up the word government and might not <laughs> mean what you commonly think that it does. So there's still a chapter to this story and this full moon is a huge part of it. Also kind of considering that we're halfway through the year right now. And this is when this full moon is happening. In the United States, we have an election coming up this year. Globally, there's been a lot of elections happening. And there's interesting things going on with this Pluto and Aquarius part kind of coming into play now. Because Aquarius is about the people. Pluto is about power and power struggles and power dynamics. So the people taking their power back is a really big theme. And the corruption being exposed. And like I said, the dark underbelly, we have Mars involved with this full moon also. So whenever Mars comes into play, there's definitely some kind of heat, agitation, ignition, something that it adds fuel to the fire. What happened last weekend on Monday, we had Mars and Uranus come together and that is an extremely volatile uh, conjunction between the two, like Uranus is revolutionary, Uranus is freedom, Uranus is liberation, but it's also surprises and Mars just fuels all of that. So it's not surprising at all what happened last weekend coming into this week with that happening exactly on Monday. So there's a lot, there's a lot that happened this week kind of leading into this full moon. There's so many aspects, like every single planet has some kind of dialogue going on. Some of the conversations are arguments, but some of them are really interesting mind expanding discussions that are challenging to the status quo and the energies that are happening. So I kind of made my list here and we'll go through them one by one and I'll give you like, you know, the astrological 
definition of what we have. I'll show you on the chart. And then I'll just kind of give like a snippet. I'll put it into English for you, I promise. And then also, like I said, I'll include a link to the, the horoscopes for this week. I focus solely on the full moon on these, but kind of infuse the underlying energies into what I wrote. And if you kind of read them together, they kind of tell a story. Like I I wrote the horoscope for one sign and then kind of let, let it lead into the next one because we have a dialogue going on all around the wheel right now like it's like all the planets are at a round table and some of them are kicking each other under the desk <laughs> under the table some of them are yelling at each other some of them are like oh I got you bro like I, I see what you're saying and having a civil conversation where we can grow from Chiron is big at the table as well and there's a healing element to all of this too but it's really kind of subtle so Let's dive into the chart. We'll go through these one by one, but kind of think of that analogy. Kind of think about the, the Zodiac wheel right now just being a huge round table. And Sun and the Moon are in opposition always when there's a full moon. Whenever I talk about oppositions, I always say it's an opportunity for balance. So with the, the fullness and the energy of Cancer and Capricorn, we have the fullness of the, the nurturer and just kind of wanting to take care of our, ourselves and our family and provide. And the maternal energy is very full as well as the paternal energy and the patriarchy and the matriarchy and like the divine feminine and masculine, like the, all of these things are kind of coming into this just with the energies of the sun and the moon. So the table is set. <laughs> Everyone has a seat and they are all talking to each other. So kind of think about that as we look at the chart. So let us look at the chart. So this is the chart for the full moon here in Atlantic City. So like I said, 6.17 a.m. on Sunday, July 21st. So here, here's exactly what I said. So sun, 29 degrees, eight arc minutes of Cancer. Moon, 29 degrees, eight arc minutes of Capricorn. The other thing to keep in mind in this is the moon isn't its happiest in the sign of Capricorn because it's opposite the sign that it rules. So we have that kind of grumpy energy kind of coming into play here too. So first thing, sign opposite moon, full moon, exact at 817. And then we have the moon and Pluto together. It's called an out of sign conjunction, but they're conjunct. Pluto is, like I said, at zero degrees of, of Aquarius and the moon is at 29 degrees of Capricorn. When it's full, a full moon with Pluto. We, we've we talked about this in several, many astro weather checks prior to this. But this being at this very interesting point, the, the pregnant degree of Capricorn and then Pluto squatting at zero degrees of Aquarius, very interesting. So there's a deep, deep Plutonic influence in and of itself, just in the fact that the moon and Pluto are, are so close together at the time of the moon's fullness. So we've covered Pluto a lot in this in these astral weather checks in the podcast as well. I did a deep dive into Pluto in the intro and first episode of season four, Becoming Chiron. So I'll include those links as well. So to me, and just generally astrologically, the Plutonic process is a breakdown of something. Pluto exposes things. Pluto exposes truth. Pluto breaks things down to purify them, to be then put back together in a different form where there's some kind of transformation, transmutation, or alchemy in that process. If you've gone through a Pluto transit, then you understand what I'm saying. If you've gone through your Pluto square, as anyone who's around 40 is either in it or still going through it, I am finally on the other side of mine, but there is a deep, deep transformation that happens. Pluto will be finalizing the story of its journey through the sign of Capricorn since 2008 in the next few months. So think about 2008 and what's changed in your life since then on a deep, deep level, like a deconditioning kind of thing. It's what, what my experience was. It matters where it happened in your chart. It matters where your Capricorn house placement, like part of your chart is, but there's a story there. So there's 
a big influence of this energy in the full moon. So not only is it intense because it's a full moon, which is always usually intense because of, you know, just the fact that the moon is full and fully shining that light on all of us, but Pluto's right there too. So Pluto's holding the moon's hand <laughs> as it's full and the day after as well. So there's something definitely huge just in and of itself in that energy. Then we have Chiron squaring the full moon. So it's it's a you know kind of bigger orb than most people will probably use. It's six degrees to me that counts. So Chiron's here at 23 degrees of Aries, about to go retrograde at the end of the month. Chiron's been writing a story in Aries himself. Uh, the big theme that I kind of was hearing going into it and what I've definitely been seeing in the experience is healing of our identity, healing of our sovereignty, healing of our independence. That's very much what Aries is all about. And then Chiron coming through that sign what, over whatever Aries placements you might have, squaring or opposing whatever cardinal placements you might have has been working on us all in some way. My astrology teacher always has called Chiron an inconvenient teacher, and I agree with that. But as you know, my entire creative pro podcast project is devoted to Chiron. <laughs> so there's a sense of mastery that also comes along with the healing journey that Chiron provides us. So Chiron squaring the sun and the moon at the time of the full moon. The Chiron square to the sun happened last week. Still relevant. It's our identity with the sun. So there's a healing, extra, extra healing also happening there during the time of the full moon and has been pretty much for a week because it's with square still there. And then with the moon, it's our emotional state. It's our inner world. It's our feelings of safety and security. So Chiron setting a square to that as well. So this is what's called a T-square. If you're feeling pressure, which you probably will be <laughs> anyway, just because it's a full moon. But yeah, Chiron's got to throw uh, his magic in there as well. So um, whenever we have a T-square, the like release valve blow-off point is on the other side in Libra. So just do something that makes you feel at peace. If it's if it's all if it's all feeling a little too much, dive into something artistic. Do some kind of practice like yoga or something that makes you feel balanced. Do something that go somewhere that brings you peace out in nature. Go to a museum like you can do that virtually too. Go to the beach if you're on the coast. Something that just makes you feel harmonious in balance. But also there's a, a justice diplomacy element that's being called into this as well. So that's aspect one, aspect two, and I'm only going to cover the major ones. There's other minor aspects going on here too, but it's, it's all so much that I'm just focusing on the majors. So the oppositions, the conjunctions, the trines and the sextiles is what I'm going to focus on going through this. So oppositions 180 degrees apart full moon one planet opposite another uh squares 90 degrees so you can see here 90 degrees sextiles is 60 degrees and trines is i think it's 180 it's a it's a one side of a triangle just to kind of give you an idea there sextiles and trines are very harmonious flows of energy oppositions and squares uh, are a little bit more gritty but that grittiness is there to force some kind of action to make us feel the pressure in, in a way that makes us do something about it it's like the the shitter get off the pot moment feeling that kind of thing so we also have mercury now pre-retrograde shadow period squaring uranus at the time of the full moon almost exactly <laughs> So we have that entered into the equation. So this I see as like a challenge to our perspective. Mercury is in Leo at 26 degrees at the time of the full moon. And Uranus is still trudging through Taurus and will be at 26 degrees of Taurus at this time. Mercury entered the pre-retrograde shadow period on the 16th. So this week, uh, 21 degrees. 
So we're in that now. So we're getting the the preview of the upcoming Mercury retrograde, which will start in early August in Virgo and then retrograde back into Leo. So this retrograde will still cover Earth and fire. So Mercury will be retrograde pretty much all of August. So we have that working on us at this time as well. As you know, I love Mercury retrogrades, although they can be wildly inconvenient and disruptive to our lives, it's the best time to work with the planet. So be very open to a shift in your perspective around whatever is bubbling and coming up during this full moon, whatever's been bubbling and coming up this week. Like, how are you handling all of the dark underbelly stuff that's been surfacing and just the hatred is very interesting. But with Uranus being involved, there's a, a surprising element to how our perspective might shift but also an, an, a revolutionary kind of innovative thing that might come into it. And at this time, Mercury is also trining Chiron. So supportive harmonious flow in the healing journey in the shift in perspective. So there's that. Then we also have a building square between Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn at 19 degrees of Pisces, now retrograde, ruling over this full moon because Saturn rules Capricorn. Jupiter is still trudging through uh, Gemini right now. It entered in, in the end of May, building into a square with Saturn as it kind of goes through almost to the midway point of the sign. Jupiter's at 12 degrees, Saturn at 19 during the time of the full moon. So this is a contracting energy, but also an expanding energy, and they're kind of arguing with each other. So we have that influencing the energies as well. These two came together, if you remember, right around the winter or the, the December solstice, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, apologies, the December solstice of 21. They had their conjunction at zero degrees of Aquarius, where Pluto is right now. So there's like a lot of energetic influence on the specific degrees of the Zodiac. Zero degrees Aquarius, 29 degrees Capricorn where these two came together back then and they've been telling their own story now as they've been moving on. So now they're just like in a little bit of a, a argu argumentative, you know, shittering it off the pot square type of thing that's been building. It's not exact yet. So we have that going on. Now the harmonious energies, which is lots of fun. So we have Jupiter, like I said, at 12 degrees Gemini. And I'm also going to include the piece that I did on Jupiter and Gemini because this Jupiter just inflates and expands everything that it touches. With Gemini, it's information, it's media, it's writing, it's, there's probably a lot of information overload that's been incoming that you may have noticed over the last couple months that might be a little extra during the full moon. And we have an opportunity with that to really practice and, and sharpen our sense of discernment. What's truth? What's AI generated? How does the truth versus something that might feel a little off intuitively feel? How does it feel in your body? What's your gut say? That's some of the challenges that we're already facing with Jupiter and Gemini. So just pay attention to that as well. So we have beautiful sextiles and trines happening with this full moon also. So the pleasant, the agreeable conversations that are happening, the, the support that's happening. So we have Jupiter and Venus and the South Node all in dialogue. Venus sextiling Jupiter, Venus sextiling the South Node, which Venus rules as it's in Libra. Venus is re-emerging now in the sky as an evening star supposedly already visible it depends on where you live i have not yet seen venus i don't know if it's because my view is blocked or i'm just not in a place where venus is visible yet it's also been kind of cloudy at night here so we've had lots of thunderstorms rolling through and that kind of thing i did see venus in my dream the other night though so venus is visible to me energetically already which i love I miss Venus terribly when Venus is traveling on the other side of the sun and invisible. And that's been since pretty much the end of April. So we have this wise Venusian energy 
emerging during this time. This Venus phase, when Venus is an evening star, is said to be more of like the mature part of her phase, where she's kind of coming back out from the dialogue with the sun, with new infused energies and maturing and having a, a higher perspective. So we have the Venusian influence here and the dialogue with Jupiter and also the south node, which is the point of release. The great anus of the zodiac is the quote that I always refer to with the south node. The great Judith Hill is the one that said that. So we have the opportunity to also release things that disturb our peace. We've had this opportunity ongoing now for a while since the south node has been in Libra since January or July of last year. So we've had the nodes and Aries in Libra now for roughly a year. We have until the end of the year with them being in these signs. So there's a harmonious energy happening here. Expansion of our consciousness, our benevolence, just having um, optimism, but also caution in the information. Our relationship to everything we love and value coming from the heart. Venus is now in Leo, which is the sign of Venus's retrograde from last year. Emerging as an evening star, becoming visible again, kind of seating on her throne in the evening sky now, which is so beautiful. So be on the lookout for that also. And then also sending harmony as Jupiter is sextiling Venus. In this, it's also trining the south node. So that sends support. That sends energetic oomph in the area of that release. So pay attention to that as well. Like what is not working for you with the story that's been written in Capricorn? might be easier to let go of at this time because we've got support from these two so there's that jupiter is also sextiling the north node in aries so 12 degrees of gemini to 10 degrees of aries so we have that path forward we have oomph for that too we have support in our growth our evolution being more independent, releasing people-pleasing tendencies, releasing things that disturb our peace and take away from our sense of balance and moving into taking care of ourselves. Like learning how to put ourselves first is not a selfish thing. Like you have to be in a position to have your own cup full before you can give to others. And Aries, it's courageous, it's brazen, it's leadership, it's... Uh, Paving the path. Just remember also in this too, like we are the future ancestors. So however we handle, however we handle our own seat at this table is a really big deal. How has this been, this nodal journey since July of last year? How were the eclipses in the spring of this year? What stories being written there for you as well? And how have you become more courageous and brave and independent to an extent Sh being a way shower of the the mo highest vibration path forward that will contrib contribute to our own soul but our evolutionary growth to a higher vibration we have support in that with this full moon also <clears throat> uranus as far as it's been into taurus since it shifted in may of 2018 trining the full moon so we have that revolutionary power also available to us during this time this is like uranus and, and the moon kind of rubbing feet under the table i guess is what i was thinking of with this trine in particular so we have that support as well like break free liberate yourself from the, the dark underbelly that's being exposed like how how do you do that for yourself do you sink in are you going to get caught in the undercurrent or are you going to stay above water, take the higher perspective, even if it's not the most popular one? So there's a lot of that energy kind of brewing that I've already seen. Like it's definitely going to be something personal, but it's most definitely been there collectively for the last week also. Earth to Earth, Taurus to Capricorn. Virgo's a little left out right now, but Virgo will come into eventually. So there's a, a practical energy to this as well. There's a, it's the physical world. It's material, it's resources, it's that kind of thing. This will only be 
temporary as the moon will move on. But at this time of the full moon, we have this energy there as well. The other thing, we have Mars trying Pluto. Mars will shift into Gemini tomorrow, so on Saturday the 20th. The last time Mars was in Gemini was during the retrograde of the fall of 22 into the winter of 23. So it's been a while, but as Mars shifts in at zero degrees Gemini, it will send support to Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. So two very interesting trines happening here because Mars and Uranus just came together exactly on Monday and now Mars is moving on. But at that time, we have the full moon happening and then this supportive energy from Uranus to the moon, Uranus to Pluto at this point too. I don't think most people are talking about this. And that will be even more pronounced as Pluto dips back into Capricorn. And briefly, for a little while, especially around the time of the full moon, Mars to Pluto. So like I said, when these two come together, that is definitely adding fuel to the fire, exposing that dark underbelly, showing the truth, but adding inflammatory energy to it. It's in Gemini now, so words, information, just be very cautious. Don't flip your lid. <laughs> it's going to be the good way I can put that. And then Mars will eventually, um, you know, continue on, meet up with Jupiter, and we'll cover that in future astro weather checks. But at the exactness of this full moon, we have this trine happening also. Zero degrees of Gemini with Mars to zero degrees of Aquarius with Pluto. Air to air and Earth to Earth. Air and Earth are not really harmonious elements, but they can be depending on how you work with them. You can be the tornado, I guess is the best way to put it, sucking up everything from the ground into the vortex. Or you can be the breeze that just blows it all away and fans everybody that's getting too hot at this table. So think of it like that. And then... The one other thing that I wanted to make sure I covered, and like I said, there are other things going on that I'm not going to talk, talk about because it's already too much. I don't want to confuse anybody, but there are definitely some other undercurrents between the planets at the table that, that's how that are happening. So the next day on Monday, this is the final thing I'm going to cover. The sun shifts into Leo. So Leo season begins on Sunday, the 22nd in the morning, and it will oppose, the sun will oppose Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. And this opposition right here is the first one in our entire lifetime. Anyone alive on planet Earth right now? The sun at zero degrees of Leo, opposite Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. The last Leo season, Pluto was in Capricorn. So this dynamic is also really important. One, because it's the first one for any of us. Two, because it's on the heels of that full moon. Like I said, our identity, our sense of self, our inner fire, our inner light, our personal power. Domicile now. So sun rules. This, oh, the Leo, Leo is the only sign the sun rules. The sun will be in Leo during this time. Very powerful position for the sun. Power dynamics definitely at play in this as well. We will see how it plays out on the other side of the full moon. We will see how we start our week on Sunday and then into next week on Monday. This is also definitely something that is at play here that I wanted to highlight. Our personal contribution to the collective and to the revolutionary energy that's happening in the collective returning the power to the people that kind of thing are themes to keep in mind and also you know how is this affecting you personally what what story has pluto been writing for the last several months in your aquarius space how is the sun coming into that opposite point playing out for you so lots of reflection happening with this lots of supportive energy for the release that always usually happens around the full moon anyway we got a lot of support from a lot of big players at the table collectively and personally so that's the last thing that i wanted to highlight in the chart 
And then just remembering that we're in the pre-retrograde shadow now with Mercury. So definitely opportunity there to work with that mercurial energy, to shift the perspective, to to be the, the psychopomp, the one that, you know, is the transporter of the others who might not quite see it just yet, but hold that vision, be bold. That was a lot of the, the cards that came out this week during Tuesday's live was standing in your power, holding your own personal vision, even if it is something that's completely different and unique, which we all offer because we are all only one of us ever that exists at one time. And our creative spirit, our heart, what we can offer and be in that heart space and, and bring that energy into making things better. So just keep all of that in mind as well, especially with the sun and Leo, Venus and Leo, and now Mercury pre-retrograde shadow period in Leo. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I know. I looked at the chart and I was like, wow, because everything has started spreading out now. So they're all just, like I said, it's like a big round table. So that is our chart. That is our full moon, <laughs> to say the least. So I want to pull the cards. We'll see what the cards have to say to kind of mic drop, sum up the energy as they usually do. So I'm pulling from my Sacred Rebels deck, as I always, always, always use this one with Leo energy, kind of, but when Uranian energy is involved, Sacred Rebels always comes out. So we are pulling from that one. And then also from my Spirit Cards Oracle deck. This is the one that the Water Spirit um, came out of from the Cancer New Moon um, reading that I did in lieu of the Astro Weather Check. So I've been using these decks together for the last couple of weeks, and I really like the messages that have been coming through and how they complement each other. So we will do this, and then we will wrap up, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> If anything, just find solace in the beauty of the full moon. I love this time of the year because the moon is lower in the sky. So I actually get to watch it rise over the water, which is one of my favorite things. And I can see it out my window pretty much the entire time, like the entire track of when it's full, when it's waxing and then waning also. So I enjoy that part of it myself. I don't have to go anywhere too, which is nice. The word wants to be written, card number 42. This card came out, I don't remember if it was last week or this week during the Tuesday Live. So just think of all that Gemini energy that we have, like I was saying, your own personal creative contribution to the collective, but also moving that energy through yourself, like your creative spirit. This is beautiful. The word wants to be written. So we have that card for the Sacred Rebels deck. And it's an emotional process to an extent, like your inspiration comes from that space of your connection to spirit and to your muse and to your soul. So remember with especially full moons to emote and move your emotions. So that overwhelm that comes as well as the emotions that run high during the times that the moon is in, in fullness. So let's look at the healing process for this one because these cards all come with a healing process. So we'll read that aloud, and then I'll pull from the spirit card stack. So card number 42. I think this one's especially beautiful, if I remember correctly from when it came out during the live. So if you're in a position to do it now, say it now, or just uh, listen to the replay of this in a time when you can actually say it loud. I think the activation of the throat chakra and the voice, especially with this healing process, is really important. So say aloud, I now choose to forgive and release any person, situation, or circumstance that has ever been a source of shame or shaming for me, whether conscious or unconscious. I now release this from my body, mind, and heart through unconditional love. I choose to claim myself instead. I love, accept, and claim all of me, 
under the loving protection and wisdom of life. I choose to live as myself now. I call on the unconditionally loving assistance that life wishes to send me for this journey now. I honor my creative power and my innate worth. So be it. Be kind to yourself. Say this every day for the next few days or however long it takes for you to believe it. You are worth the effort. And look at the beautiful butterflies on there. I've actually already started seeing monarchs here. So to me, yeah, those are monarchs on the card. So beautiful, beautiful message there, especially with all that Leo energy. So there's that from Sacred Rebels. And then from Spirit Cards, let's see what comes up. Dear Spirit, I don't think I've ever pulled this one before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dear Spirit, awareness, sensitivity, gentleness. How beautiful that is. Oh, I love that so much. You have that beautiful purple. And that sacred geometry symbol that's on all of these cards is called the Sri Yantra. And it relates to the balancing of the divine feminine and divine masculine. So that's important energies that come into play with this full moon in particular because it's Cancer Capricorn, like I said. So that's beautiful. And let's see what... Dear spirit has to say to us. Gentleness is my strength. Sensitivity is my power. Dear spirit is the way of sensitivity and gentleness. Deer are highly sensitive and aware creatures picking up even the slightest crackle of a falling leaf or a scent in the wind. Deer move lightly and swiftly through their surroundings, mostly unheard and unseen. Sensitivity plays an important role in our lives. Sensitive beings are the way showers, seeing and feeling things that most others haven't yet. And they bring this gift of awareness for all to learn and benefit from. The most powerful healers are also the most sensitive. In the old male patriarchal culture, sensitivity is labeled a weakness, but it's truly a power. It's the most sensitive telescope that gathers the most light and sees the farthest into space and the most sensitive microscope that detects the smallest elements. When scientists can't detect the existence or intelligence of some life forms, it's often because they haven't yet developed sensitive enough equipment to detect it, not because it isn't there. Dear Spirit Medicine sees and feels through the barriers that separate us from others, including other life forms, and from the mystery and magic of life. In this awareness, we move through life in the spirit of love, appreciation, and respect for all beings. <clears throat> Dear Spirit also has the understanding of what's necessary for balance in the world and has the ability and capacity to, at times, sacrifice for the higher good of all. Dear Spirit is a gentle reminder for you to recognize the great power of sensitivity and gentleness within you. Acknowledge and honor this power and let it guide you in your thoughts, words, and actions. This is a strength to draw upon even in the most challenging times, allowing you to transition through them with no harm to yourself or others. Dear Spirit aligns you with the heart that connects all beings, and there isn't a more potent and powerful force in the world. Hmm. 
Mic drop. Thank you, dear spirit. So write the word, speak the word, maybe not in a harsh or argumentative way. Call on dear spirit for that sensitivity and and guidance and <sighs> subtle power in being in the peaceful space and the sensitive space beautiful messages and deer all over the place here in jersey so it's very easy to harness that deer spirit just because they're so prevalent here up in the northeast so i love that and I will be doing both of those myself for sure. So I leave you all with that. As usual, the cards sum up everything. And there's also words that were spoken in the readings from the books that I said already in the Astro Weather Check. So I always love when that happens. So I send you all in peace and in love. Remember to be a maverick. We've got that Chiron and that Uranian energy present in all this. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, come from your heart. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> we got Mars, remember, we got Mars influencing everything as well. So stay at peace, be peace. I am peace is a good affirmation. And I send you all into this lovely weekend and this to find the beauty in this full moon. And I really hope that if this resonates with you, you will let me know. You'll leave some comments, follow the show on uh, Spotify and on our YouTube subscribe and reviews and stars always on whatever platform allows it. And if you just want to reach out to me directly or say alchemy at gmail.com, I'm still doing readings, both, like I said, in person every other or first and for Thursday, first and third Thursdays in May's landing, but also remotely at always. So um, I have a multi multitude of options there on my page, seagoddesshealingarts.com slash Ursa Alchemy. I would love to work with you. Readings are my favorite thing because then we get to dive in deeply into how this is all personally affecting you in your own chart, where your Capricorn space is and, and all that and what the two full moons have shown. So I'll put a link as always to my services in the episode description. And um, yeah, till next time. Should be... Uh, the Leo new moon will, will probably be the next one. And I think I have another episode of Becoming Chiron Brewing. I think I have my next emotion. So stay tuned for that as well. Bye.